Welcome back to Let's Play Do. I'm Burning Dog Face. And, uh, the shit has already hit the fan. Uh, before we go, I did want to point a thing out that happened last time. That was not me in control of the camera during the cutscene in this elevator. When, uh, this Dr. Hayden guy mentioned that all of it he did was for the good of mankind, it was Doom Guy that just sort of glanced down to this dead guy. Not me. <laughs> I like that they found a way to make a silent protagonist feel sarcastic. This armor is pretty bitchin', but I don't know how it is for, uh, falling damage. Well, I guess I'm about to find out. Fine, down I go. Impact compensation. Neat! I remember in Doom 3, all you needed was a gas mask in order to walk around on the surface. And your bare arms and everything. I do dig the power armor look, though. A brief history. Useful! Despite the discovery of liquid water on Mars in the early 21st century, fingers crossed, uh, the colonization of Mars had little appeal beyond exploration for the next century. Hmm. With the discovery of the Argent Fracture, a trans-dimensional stream of unrefined Argent Plasma, in 2095, settling and mining Mars became both practical and essential to meet the vast energy demands of Earth. However, the need for atmospheric conversion and terraforming of the Red Planet was a task that seemed insurmountable to all but one corporation, the UAC. Through their diligent dedication to technological advancement and forward thinking, uh, an outpost was established in MTC 2096 to extract Argent Plasma from the Fracture. Hmm. When this plasma is subjected to, UA to the UAC's fermionic transference pattern, Argent Energy is produced. This remarkable venture eventually bore fruit as Argent Energy became the primary power source for all of Earth. New visitors to the UAC facility may take for granted the rich atmosphere while on the surface, but it should be remembered that just a few short decades ago, Mars is an inhospitable desert that could support no life. Unauthorized exploration into the exclusion zones outside the base is not allowed under any circumstances. Highly volatile experiments and artifacts are frequently researched a safe distance away from the base, and your safety in these areas cannot be guaranteed. So we can breathe here. Still not going to take my helmet off. If I remember correctly, you needed a gas mask, but not a pressure suit, because, uh... What the fuck is that? Because, you know, we can't breathe the atmosphere of Mars, but it's not a vacuum, either. Oh. Hi there! Something shooting at me. Like, with a gun? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Go for the legs, boo! Go for the legs! Ooh, pretty. Oh, hell. What in God's name is <clears throat> that? hell are you? You're a possessed soldier. That's who you are. Right, it pauses that. I don't need to wait for a good moment. Oh, there's meat in his gun. I don't like that. Oops. Possessed soldier. 
While Lazarus wave exposure does effectively wipe any vestige of human behavior from most of its victims, some subjects continue to display cognizance posthumously. Or tactical co cognizance posthumously. As with possessed engineers, this does not appear to be random. If an individual has training in combat as part of the UAC military, there's a UAC military, by the way, the Lazarus Wave event will transform them into more than mere slaves. This anomaly further supports the theory that there is some form of genetic coding embedded within the Lazarus Wave particles, which governs the outcome of Lazarus Wave exposure on a per-case basis. I'm getting just enough information to be worried about this. Mind you, you know, we're clearly uh, uh, under attack from a full-scale demonic incursion, so... I want to rip his gun arm off and shoot him with it or something. Ow! Hmm. Ooh. Yes, give me that health. I need that. Hmm, good. This one, too. Any exploding barrels down here? No. Uh, there's an exploding imp up here. Oh, right, I forgot they can do that. Ah! Ah! Good. Where have you gone, and why do I keep hearing? There. No, you're not that guy. You don't have a gun. Oh. You're just beef jerky now. Oh, fuck. There you are, you rotten piece of shit. Oh, God. What is it with Mars and Hell, anyway? Good God. Is that locational damage? Like, those gory holes appear in his body because that's where I shot him? Huh, no feet in this game. Noted. Uh, armor and ammo. Yes, good. Mmm, drink it right up. Of course. Find the blue key card. That's very doom. Oh, right, there is an auto map. Alright, looks like I've been everywhere then. Let's go this way. You look important. Wait. Is that. a doll? Who keeps taking all the legs? No, don't answer that question. You never really want a question answered if the question is posed to hell. Oh. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> collectibles. There are two UAC Marine Guy collectibles in each in every map. Each one you find will unlock a model that can be viewed by visiting the collectibles menu. See if you can find them all. The collectibles menu can be viewed after selecting your campaign save slot. Oh, so in the main menu then. Oops, secrets. Explore the environment to find secret areas that contain useful items and also contribute to earning weapon upgrade points. I seem to remember hearing a million years ago that uh, a bunch of the levels in this game have hidden areas that are, like, sample sections lifted out of the classic Doom levels. So you open a secret door and suddenly you're in a room with, like, 1993 level wall textures. Okay, so I don't have to, like, scan it or anything. I just have it. Nice. Oh. Oh! Frag grenades. What? Metal mouse button to use an equipment item when you have it available. Equipment items are on a recharge timer, so I don't, can't run out. Note. 
that must complete before they can be used again. The equipment system can be improved by using the Praetor suit to cycle through available equipment with F2 and F1. Uh, eat shit and die. Worked for me. Ooh, and that guy got all punchy. Oops. Down he goes. Oh, my God. Is that bar moving up or down? Up! Oh, so it doesn't take very long to recharge at all, really. Hello! I was trying to take his other arm. No! I keep pressing R. This is I'm so used to having to reload everything. Ooh. The impression I got from Doom 3, because the story was a bit uh, thin in Doom 1, and Doom 2 for that matter, is that the Union Aerospace Corporation is basically to the Doom setting what uh, the Wayland yutani Corporation is to the Alien setting. Nope! Hi there. No mod equipped. Right-clicking does nothing with the shotgun right now. I missed whatever that was. Oh, map data. Yes! I can't see any further than that. Is that the objective? Yes, it is. Is that the one I got? I'm not actually sure where I came from here. Oh, yeah, 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 I dropped down here. Grabbed that data log. So that would be... Okay, cool. It is keeping track of the things I have found, not the things I have not found. Uh... Can I not just take this thing? Grind up some demons good with these tires. Oops. Okay. Ah, okay, that's what those are. I missed what those are called, though. Okay, let's see. Uh, area scanning technology, this upgrades the capabilities of navigation systems. What happens if I click on them? Does it immediately use it? Use equipment to remove upgrade. Equipment capacity and recharge time. The effects of power-ups. The speed of certain actions. Um, what sounds if I just click on this? Oh, okay, so I need to get this in order to get these. Barrels are fun, immune to- That was the name of a level, just full of tons of exploding barrels. Oh, interesting. That does seem very useful. What was that one? Barrel and environmental damage. I might actually start with the uh, map thing. The auto map reveals Exploration items in a wider radius around your position. Please give me item awareness. No, but let's go with it anyway. Uh, why is nothing... There we go. I couldn't close the menu for a second there. Praetor tokens. Okay. 
Elite Guard. The Elite Guard is a company of security personnel charged with protecting the Lazarus Project research and maintaining order throughout the Argent facility. Their distinct red uniforms help distill a calming influence among UAC employees and are known to be level-headed, disciplined, and fair but firm. I wonder if any of that is true, or if this is just propaganda. Their suits contain cybernetic augmentations which give the Elite Guards an advantage should they need to quell any disturbances. Their augmentations allow them to be faster, stronger, or more resilient to injury. Frag Grenade. The design of this weapon is conventional in nature, though it has been refined to perform at the limit of its ballistic capabilities. The UAC Fragmentation Grenade uses a Comp D explosive package encased in a steel alloy shell and has an effective fatality radius of about 5 meters. It's not bad. Uh, improvements on the antiquated M67 grenade include a more reliable chemical fuse mechanism, interior machining of the casing to provide more efficient projectile dispersion, and a trigger switch safety clip to prevent unwanted activation. The newer Comp D explosive also ensures the radial pressure wave has no drop spots, ensuring full damage potential within the fatality zone. I wonder if this is called a Praetor token because they reverse engineered this guy's suit from mine. How long have I been in that sarcophagus anyway? Oh god, that did a lot of damage. Apparently there is an emphasis in this game on replaying levels in order to find secrets and collectibles and such. Need it. This has a picture of a grenade on it. What if I do this? Nothing. Oh, it didn't. Okay, that's cool. It instantly refills my grenade. That is good to know. Are these lines of energy or just uh, embarrassing seams? Is this something I should be toggling V Sync on for, or are these actually meant to be here? V-Sync that fixes that? I don't remember. What is all this big empty space up here? Oh, it just doesn't show any of this junk on the map. Right. Oops. Uh, there's a thing there. That's cool. No, no, it's rotating. It's not just backtracking now. Yeah, that is the first one I saw. That would have been, yes, okay. Okay, sorry. The rotation did my head in just a little bit. Yes, and then I went through here, and it was all uh, this stuff. <clears throat> Moving around. Well, they appear to still have forklifts in the future, so I suspect they are still using skids. Some things never fucking change. uncomfortable. Ah! Fast little buggers, aren't you? No 
goods and services here. Just checking. Is that a metal skid? I guess some things do change. Combat support, okay, wheel, weapon mods. Field drones will supply you with weapon mods that can be upgraded by using, or sorry, activated using the right click. Choose which mod you want, it will be attached to your weapon. Use weapon upgrade points to improve their capabilities. Charge burst, hold the button to charge up a three round burst of tighter spread. Explosive shot, uh, I don't know about arcing explosive round, but I do like the, uh, the concept of an explosive round. Let's go with this one. Hmm. I was kind of hoping I could toggle back and forth. And we'll finish it off with this codex entry. Explosive shot. This shotgun ammunition incorporates a glycerin fuse that detonates in... Jesus Christ. Octani octanitrocubane gel upon impact. Embedded shot is dispersed at the point of impact, creating a wide area of effect. Highly effective against multiple targets, or uh, when detonated to the rear of enemies in defilade. I don't know what that means. Field drone, often referred to as droppers, these drones are developed by the UAC to autonomously receive and deliver ordered parts to engineers, off-duty employees, and soldiers. Sounds like some friends over there waiting to make my acquaintance, so, uh... I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Dude. Later.